Welcome to the Curious Mind podcast. My name is Gabriel Ellis, and today we have the third session with my client Anna, who is exploring her relationship with her family of origin and how to reconnect with them, uh, living as an expat in Europe, trying to connect with uh, a family that lives in the US and uh, where there has uh, developed a disconnect over the past years. At the beginning of the session, I give a summary of my impressions so far. Um, and when you listen to this episode, please keep in mind that we have limited ourselves to three sessions in total, and that this is uh, far shorter than a normal therapy would be. I usually do provide short-term therapy, so uh, a, a more frequent um, duration of therapy sessions uh, with questions like these, life issues, family issues, and so forth, uh, would be about seven to ten sessions, which is considered short therapy. Um, and yet, uh, it is remarkable uh, the progress that my client has made and this time and throughout uh, this and the following last episode uh, you will hear how she starts to approach her family in a new way integrating um, the insights and reflections from our conversations and thus having a better explicit understanding of the complexity of the situation and how to approach it enjoy so this is our third session that we record, and uh, by this we, uh, with the session we end our recording cycle. Um, so it will be interesting uh, to um, recapitulate uh, uh, your development. What uh, is kind of left to do, of course, to get engaged also in the further conversation but uh, maybe towards the end of our conversation to build a little bit of an arc and to uh, help our listeners to understand what this very short journey of three sessions meant to you both in terms of the, the topic that we have been discussing but also for you as an insight of what a possible journey of uh, therapy or counseling would look like because uh, I don't know if we have pointed that out in the beginning you did not have any previous experience so for you you come in as a newcomer and this was uh, kind of a glimpse into it if I may uh, summarize what I have learned so far and my impressions that I have had so far uh, one of the, uh, the there are for me uh, important elements which are the family dynamic where you come from, the style that it has given both you and your siblings and your parents, you handed that last time a little bit, and then as a third component, what it leaves, the task that it leaves you with. Uh, the big disruptor in the family dynamic was you moving away. Um, that is prob probably something that has not been done much, certainly not in your core family. Uh, plus, you have been the oldest sibling, which means that uh, with all the tasks that you had uh, in growing up, even though the age difference was not that big, one year to your brother and uh, four years to your sister, uh, still you had a designated role in many ways and you expressed it so you were the one where you the one person that your siblings uh, confided in had trust in uh, and i guess there were many more aspects where it was palpable in the dynamic the family dynamic that you were the oldest one so in that sense to be the one who breaks apart in a family that is so close where it's so difficult to be uh, included in, to be uh, regarded as included in, and to have done something that was certainly not foreseen in the family structure, uh, and then to set this precedence is part of what brought you into the miserable position in terms of the family 
that you are right now, where you are the one who has to complicate, uh, contemplate, how the hell can I get back in? Uh, in terms of the family dynamic, we heard of some of the consequences, right? Apparently, your sister took over the position that you had. She is the connecting tissue between the, at least the remaining family. She's not been a connecting tissue towards you. You had to be the one who reaches out to her. I got the sense that uh, that the women are particularly strong anyway in your family. When you described a little bit uh, how the uh, uh, your dad's family had difficulties to get integrated, it means that you took the position, the point of view of your your mom's family. She is portrayed uh, by your description as the one who is in the center, and the other ones have to be accommodating they have to prove their worth uh, from which i just deduced that your mother had a particularly strong part in this family dynamic or your mom's family uh, and it would make sense that um, after your mom you were you were the strong one when you left your sister's the strong one so that there is um, there are particular nodes kind of to pay attention to uh, when thinking about the family dynamic which is your mom and your sister. When it comes to the style of the family dynamics, what is the most standing out for me is a combination of two things, which is an avoidance of conflicts uh, and connected with that and direct result of that is not expressing too much or in too clear terms, my needs. Because expressing one's needs, needs are always in conflict with the needs of others. Right. If I, as a teenager, have the need to spend more outside, that's certainly not the need of my mother and my, my father. Right. They would want me to continue to take charge of the household and and so on and be responsible and all of these things. So in order to do the thing that I need to do as a teenager or afterwards, it's somehow the avoidance of conflict somehow implies that I don't make a big deal out of expressing what I actually want and to somehow go a silent route. If I do that, the ones in power will always be the one who have the, the check on the situation because they would count on the others not making too overly clear how they divert in their needs uh, in comparison to the family needs, which means I put air quotes there for the ones who are listening, uh, the family needs, which are the parents' needs or the, the parent dynamic needs. So we have explicitness as the theme or the lack of explicitness. I encouraged you last time to invest some thought into how would I want things to be? As who do I want to approach my siblings uh, and my parents when I want to have uh, closer contact to reconnect with them? Uh, mm -hmm. And thus to overcome the, um, the avoidance and then we had a third theme that emerged uh, out of uh, the last conversation, which is that especially you as the oldest one might be perceived as the one who checked out, who very conveniently got rid of her uh, responsibilities by just moving away, which might be an obstacle uh, for reconnecting with your siblings uh, as you mentioned, your parents have moved in with your brother, so he has some share in the burden. Your sister is organizationally and maybe emotionally the connective tissue. Who are you in that? Right. What we don't know so far, and maybe you can uh, share afterwards a little bit about that and how your parents perceive that. So if there is a theme of abandonment, of conveniently getting rid of responsibilities, that is projected on you. Who is the driving force of this narrative? Is it your mother through needs, through some gestures, through some comments by which the children who might, uh, might be used to hint reading, so to say, because maybe it's not that explicit culture in the family. So they would create an image of what your mom thinks about you through her comments, and then take that position over 
and that would be a main factor for excluding you, excommunicating you. Uh, or is it, that would mean that uh, basically all the family members have a very similar uh, idea about you and your potential betrayal. Or do they all carve out their own image of you, which would mean that you would have, uh, you would need separate strategies for your mom, your parents, for your sister and for your brother. Okay, these are the questions and the observations that I've had uh, throughout uh, our two previous conversations. And with that, it's basically for you, but also for the audience, uh, with that long introduction, um, I would hand it over to you, to your thoughts, to exercises, to changes that maybe have occurred. <laughs> That's uh, a great summary. Uh, it's not, and <laughs> I'm actually impressed <laughs> how well you were able to summarize, especially my family. And, uh, you know, I never really thought about it, but I think that my family, it, it, it is all about the women. And, um, you know, maybe that's why, like, my brother and I, we don't have such a strong relationship because he's an outlier as it is. He's a boy. So it's kind of like he can just do his own thing hmm. and he doesn't feel the obligation to to connect with family like I do. Because it was like my grandmother was like the matriarch hmm. and very, very strong presence in our family. And then she passed away uh, over a decade ago. And then from there, it just it, it went on to my aunts in the family. And then hmm. and then I'm the eldest cousin of that family. So I grew up with them when some of my aunts and uncles were still teenagers. So I'm still like, I'm like up there mm -hmm. with them. And I think that's why when I left, it was much harder. Maybe if I were a boy, it wouldn't have been as hard. It's for the family. weird to say. Yeah, for the family. Mm -hmm. I think they would have, they could have wrapped their brain around it better. Like when we moved, um, when I was younger, out of state, in a different state, my dad's side of the family, they were very supportive. Mm. And it was like natural. And my mom's side of the family, it was like, it was a bad thing. And mm -hmm. they put all this pressure on my mom. And my mom went through depression with that move. So yeah. I think that's it, it, unconsciously, of course, she kind of like projects that onto me now. Yes. Not knowing. It's like mm -hmm. doing the same thing that your family did to you. <laughs> and, yes. and it's not fair, you know? Mm -hmm. And when she was going through that depression, I was there to support and to help and uh, take care of my brother and sister while she was dealing with that at those times and we had to move back because it was just too hard just mm -hmm. we and we moved back to um and we moved back literally in with the family in with my grandmother in with everybody we went as close as we could be which was just crazy yes so, so basically the yeah. whole family witnessed uh an event when you the core family moved away and they saw yeah. the consequences and the emotional punishment yeah. from the rest of the mother's uh, family. Side. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. And then you had the audacity to do something very similar than afterwards, even though you yeah. should have known better the consequences of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And I did even worse. I went like across an ocean. <laughs> so it was very dramatic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I took my child, you know, like they they can't see uh, my son. And that's like, you know, if I talk to my mom, and in fact, I did the other day, and we made reference to my son's early home videos, right? And she has some and she said to me, she can't watch them because it hurts. She she cries too much. Yes. And I said, Okay, mom, I don't know what to say. And she's like, well, I'm just telling you my feelings. I'm allowed to tell you my feelings. And I said, yes, you are. But I don't know how to respond to that. Like, I, it's just like kind of hanging there, like like this guilt, you know, like instead of talking about yes. fun things about my son when he was younger, then it's just like a reminder of, well, I don't get to enjoy him anymore because of you, you know. 
Okay, that's a, that's already an interesting topic because uh, what I've heard your mom saying was not yet the guilt. It might be an implication, and of course, I didn't know her at all. Maybe this is how she makes you feel guilty, and she knows that. But basically, she did what uh, is at the root of uh, uh, of blaming uh, others is there's pain first of all, right? And in this specific case, and when we talk about family dynamics, it's the pain of separation. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's 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 nice that you let it hang there. Basically, uh, I think so. Whether or not there is an implication from her side that you should feel guilty about it because well, who caused the pain? You did. Whether or not I pick up that implication, I can respond to the pain. I don't have to respond to the guilt implication. Yeah. Which means if mm -hmm. she she is pained by um, by the separation from her grandson, mm -hmm. I can make that better by connecting them more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to offer that, and to not to respond to the other implication that well you're to blame to that. If you didn't want me to feel that pain, you should have stayed. To not respond to that. Because that is a mm -hmm. pointless argument, right? That she's just right. Yeah, simmering. I didn't even go into it with her. I was just like, "Well, yeah. I understand." Like, you know, what can I say? <laughs> yes. Is it possible for you? Is it uh, something desirable for you at all to? I don't know how tax savvy the, her, your mom is, but I'm sure she has some people around who could show her videos, who could do Skype calls with uh, with mm -hmm. her son, and all yeah. That. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we've been, um, in the past week or so, we've spoken twice now, and I hope to talk to her again later this week, um, and that's good, uh, and she can see my son for, for a few minutes, and they talk, you know, my son's at an age, too, where he does, it's, he's, like, a little, like, a preteen, so, mm -hmm. He's very polite, very nice, but he doesn't know how to, he's not sophisticated enough to have, you know, conversation. So after a few minutes, it's kind of like, okay, <laughs> I want to <laughs> run away. Yes. So she gets a little bit of that and that's fine. Um, I try to send pictures whenever I can. Um, but last time I sent her and my dad pictures on Facebook, she got, this is very strange. She got a like offended that I just sent it, that I sent it to her and my dad at the same time. And she wants her own message with the pictures. Yeah. It was so strange. She wasn't like that before. And I don't know what, like that's, that was something different. So I had to like resend the pictures mm -hmm. that she got. I'm like, mom, it doesn't matter if it's with you and dad in the same message versus just you in the message. Like you, the pictures are yours but it was just i think her trying to show me like i wanted i want to feel more personally connected yes uh and it's good to m try to make sense out of that now as implicit as your family or maybe your mother's side specifically is uh it's good to try to extract some meaning out of that so obviously she wants a special treatment mm-hmm Right. Yeah. Because there is, again, some feeling of neglect or pain when yeah. she is tossed into a group with your dad. Yeah. Can you reflect a little bit more uh, knowing her, what that could mean? Yeah. Um, well, she grew up in a big family, nine brothers and sisters. <clears throat> She's one of the oldest. And her mother, my grandmother, was uh, an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather who i didn't really know in my life he left them when they were young so here she was this vulnerable little girl who mm -hmm. had to grow up really quickly in this environment taking care of her her siblings she was the one who was always she was like always a mom uh -huh. she was never like not a mom she was <laughs> among her siblings as well no no but she was the i think number three but of nine so yeah, she's number three. So she was like, my, I had an, an 
um, uncle. He's the oldest, but you know, it's a, it's a man. So yeah. the men don't really have to take care of the others as much. Mm -hmm. He was responsible though. And then my older uh, aunt who uh, helped, but she was, uh, she had some other things going on. And then my mom, it, so mm -hmm. it really was about my mom taking care of everybody. And I think that, you know, that was great because she became really good at taking care of children. And that's why I have a really nice childhood because my mom, she knew how to have stability and to take care of kids. But I think that she didn't have enough care for herself. And yeah. she kind of imposed that on me as I got older in my teens, I was, it was like, she was looking for more of that. Like I would help her when she was going through depression, like rub her back or I would make dinner for the family or, you mm -hmm. know, defend her against my brother and sister who were like rebelling or whatever. I would always take her side, like always, because I didn't want her to feel upset. So I was kind of taking on, I think, the role that she had taken. And, yes, yes. And there is yeah. a, the, that's it's interesting because many families with uh, alcohol issues and other issues as well they have a certain uh, dynamic uh, aspect of a dynamic which is called parentification which means that children have to take on responsibilities of the parents because they can yeah. now you're yeah. saying that you're not actively in an uh, alcoholic household but your, your mother comes from that so uh, right. probably this is a position that she had to take mm -hmm. which she was aware of where you yeah as a child you cannot be that innocent you cannot be that naive uh mm -hmm. to grow up in a household where there is potential danger whatever that is abusive mm -hmm. parents or uh loud arguments uh the threat of a divorce all those kind of looming uh potential dangers in the family that always forces children to uh in a position where they feel that they have a responsibility of uh, stabilizing and pacifying. Yeah. So mm -hmm. assuming that your mom was forced into a into a position like that, it would make sense that she uh, she automatically brought that into the ne next generation, so that yeah. you were the one who uh, yeah. supported her. Uh, and that's a very specific thing with caretakers who are bad and showing that they need help they mm -hmm. find other ways or they have unrealistic expectations of others just somehow seeing or mind reading that they need help but they have not developed the skills of saying look i am in need i'm in a vulnerable place right now i need your support yeah. and you can yeah. show me support by just listening or maybe you can help me out with something and so on people like that are not particularly good at this they have to learn this later yeah. on and uh, your mom is an example for that and you are an example for that and maybe now yeah. might be an example for that as well I'm, i don't know she has kind of grown into that situation mm -hmm. now the situation has changed now your mom is older uh and maybe now it's more appropriate for her to for you to support her more than mm -hmm. it might have been in the past where it's unfair in many yeah. ways to dump on a developing child a teenager the position of okay you support me in my depression it shouldn't have been your thing to do your responsibility to do. but now you know coming back to our, our current situation with the question of uh just brainstorming what would have been a potential reason for her to say look i want special treatment when it comes to uh getting pictures and contact and so on mm -hmm. it might be uh, I hope I don't read too much into that, but I, I want to be taken care of. I want to see that I'm yeah. special. Yeah. I'm not just parent, I'm your mom. I want to feel that. I want to see that. Mm -hmm. Does, does that true. resonate with you? Did that make sense? Yeah. I mean, my first response to that was like, oh, well, God, she's ridiculous. She's acting like a child, you know, and how dare she. But after some time, I've been reflecting on that thinking, oh, that was just her, like a cry for help in a way. Like, mm -hmm. I, like please just just uh, make me feel special or connected. 
Yes. You know, she's, she's not a diva, you know? So I, um, maybe I should just let it go and just, you know, be the, like more empathetic to it and just say, okay, if she needs that, like, is it a real big deal for me to resend some pictures? Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, I can do that. Um, like I, I tell her news now, if I have something big happening in my life, she knows first Mm -hmm. that I'm letting her know first, like, Oh, I, this just happened. This project just happened for me or whatever. And, um, or my son accomplished this and I, I, cause I'm trying now to think like, Oh yeah, she, she wants to feel like the matriarch (laughs) cause she's been, you know, given that role through our, um, our family structure and in a way I have to kind of honor that this, she's not a bad person, you know, Mm -hmm. she means well, it's just, she doesn't, she's never been taught how to express her emotions. Things come out of my Mm -hmm. mom where I'm like, wow, you need therapy. (laughs) Like I can't believe, and she'll, she'll act so nonchalant about it. You know, like I remember, yes, I remember a few months ago, we were talking about how my sister was pained at one time as a young girl because of some situation that happened with a neighborhood boy. It didn't go too far, but it was still an uncomfortable situation. Right. And I was just like, Oh yeah, that's, I feel bad, you know, for her. And my mom said, Oh, she'll be fine. You know, when I was a little girl, my, my uncle took me in the room and, and did things with me. Yeah. And I was like, what? (laughs) <laughs> why did you just drop that like yeah. it was so and she's like but you know you just move on Vanessa it's just like you know things happen in life and I'm like mom that's something quite serious like we didn't talk about it again after that but I, it still like weighs on me like geez she she really went through hard stuff and she you know she should learn how to deal with that I think like I, I want to help her. Too. Right. It's it's indicative of how she felt she had to deal with it and, um, you know, wrap it up in a situation where she was taking responsibility anyway. For yeah. Siblings, for children, and so on. You don't have. It's a luxury to take emotional care of abuse. Yeah. You have to mm-hmm. move on. You have to, you know, organize stuff. You have to make life mm-hmm. happening and so on. So at least this is how she perceived it. I think now in our generation, we have uh, a better understanding that we need uh, more of a balance, that we need to uh, sure. give space to yeah. emotional self-care more in order to uh, execute the organizational part better. Yeah. In the previous generation, it was very often not the case. And uh, your mom, unfortunately, is an example of that. Now, yes, does it hurt you mm-hmm. to uh, to give her a special treatment? It doesn't. Still, you know, talking about your self-care, the question is uh, that I have for you is, do you want to get into a place where you understand her need? Or is it important for you to contribute uh, to a less special treatment of your mom? Or is she in an age mm-hmm. and a point of life and like, okay, she has, mm-hmm. has to learn many diff- difficult things anyway, the more she's aging. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not interested to, you know, educate her or, her or to change the dynamic yeah. of her self-perception yeah. in, in that way. I have to navigate that, I think, uh, a lot, you know, like, um when it comes to politics and things i mm-hmm. i i can have a friendly conversation with her but i've learned to just let things go like this is you know she needs to th- that's who she is that's fine is that um or is it painful is it difficult uh it's okay you know but like maybe at times where I'm just like, you know, mom, <laughs> can you just see this one thing? And, you know, but whatever, that's the whole other mm-hmm. conversation about politics. Yes. That's also happening in right now in our culture with, yes. you know, different dynamics. Um, 
but when it comes to family stuff, I want, I want to help her. I, you know, I want to, to be there for her. It's, it, mm. yeah, it was not cool to do to a teenage girl, but she didn't do it intentionally, but like I picked up the slack. Yeah. I didn't have to. Also, I could have rebelled, but I didn't because it's just not in my nature to rebel like that. And um, I feel like now I'm a little more stable emotionally than I was before. Mm-hmm. I, I'm happier in my life. I'm at a place in my life where I feel peace. So why not, you know, why not help this woman who who loves me and is a good person? Mm-hmm. Can you describe uh, if you took a different approach last week? So you, you, you emphasized that you uh, called twice, apparently. Is that a change uh, to previous uh, weeks and months? And did you do it with a different attitude, with a different intent? Uh, t- talking with my mom? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, I, I was just more relaxed with her. Um, you know, I, I just listened a lot more than hmm. speaking, mm-hmm. just letting her talk, you know, talking about her sisters or whatever family stuff. And I'm just like, just kind of like nodding and just being there to just, just to listen. And whereas before I was like, oh, come on. Or I was like, mm. you know, more argumentative. Yeah. And this time I was like, okay, you know, just, you just tell me. Like, and, um, I think that she liked that. She needed that. And Mm -hmm. that's why we talked, I think, twice this week so far. And maybe we'll talk again. Maybe she needs that. She has more time on her hands, by the way. She's retired. And so it's just like, you know, she needs something like that. Please join us for the second part of the third session in our next episode, where we will summarize the development so far and where my client gives uh, a summary and a retrospection from her perspective, both on how the journey has been so far with her family, as well as her understanding of the therapeutic process to which she was a newcomer as well.